planet's diverse and thriving ecosystem may seem that it is strong and indestructible, but the truth is it is vulnerable to collapse. Jungles can become deserts and reefs can become lifeless stones. Even without catastrophic events like volcanoes, eruptions, and asteroids. But what makes one ecosystem withstand these extreme and destructive events and other ecosystems can't? The answer is biodiversity. So what is biodiversity? Biodiversity refers to a variety of living creatures on Earth, including plants, animals, and insects. While Earth's biodiversity is so rich that many species have yet to be discovered, many species are being threatened with extinction due to the human activities, putting the Earth's magnificent biodiversity at risk. Biodiversity is built up with four intertwined components. Um, the ecosystem biodiversity, the species diversity, the genetic diversity, and the functional diversity. So why is species diversity? It simply means the number of species and the number of individuals of the species in a specific environment or an area. To put it in better and more understandable terms, it simply means the population of a species in a specific community or ecosystem. This diversity has a great contribution to the richness of an ecosystem. The more a species is of numbering or invading a community, the lower the richness of an ecosystem is. But if an ecosystem has a well-balanced community, it is more likely to tell that that ecosystem is rich in biodiversity. Next is ecosystem diversity. So what is ecosystem diversity? It refers to an environment or a habitat and whether it has more ecosystems thriving in it. It is also a great factor in biodiversity. If a community has a lot of ecosystems in it to make more food chain cycles and support each other, then this community has richer biodiversity. The third one is genetic diversity. Genetic diversity describes how a member of a species in a given ecosystem are closely related. For example, this stony owl has two types, the white ones and the brown ones. The brown ones evolved over time to blend in more with the environment. That is why their offsprings are the ones that is flourishing nowadays. However, some species are being outnumbered or endangered due to inbreeding, or if they are losing in the natural selection. Lastly, the functional ecosystem. Functional ecosystem is the way a species behave, obtain food, and use the natural resources of an ecosystem. For example, we humans have better ways of hunting and looking for food and shelter. We use advanced equipment to contract food and modern technology to build our homes. Now, we will be talking about ways of how to measure biodiversity. There are two ways of how to measure biodiversity. The first one is species richness. Biodiversity can be measured in relation to species richness or the number of species in a given area. Species richness refers to the number or population of the species in a given ecosystem. It doesn't take account of how the distribution of the species is, but it only counts the total number of the species in a given area. For example, the figure A has the total number of 9 trees with evenly distributed different types of trees. The figure B has the total number of 11 trees with 2 species and one is more dominant than the other. Regardless of the species domination, the figure B has the higher biodiversity if you apply and consider the species richness measurement to it because figure B has more population than figure A. The second way of how to measure biodiversity is Simpson's Diversity Index. So in Simpson's Diversity Index, it states that it takes account both species richness and the abundance or evenness of a species. 
it means that if a community has one or two dominant species in it, it is more likely that that community has low biodiversity because its number of species is not evenly or fairly distributed. For example, figure A has the total number of 11 trees with 3 oak tree, 4 spruce tree, 2 pine tree, and 2 cypress tree. Figure B has the total number of 11 trees with 2 pine trees and 9 oak trees. Taking account of the population and evenness of the distribution, if you apply Simpson's Diversity Index in this sample, it is more likely that figure A has higher biodiversity, considering the totality of the organisms and the fairly distribution of the species. Figure B is dominated by oak trees, that is why it has lower biodiversity than figure A. Now, we will be talking about the types of distribution. So there are three types of distribution. The first one is random distribution. It means that the organisms or the species are randomly or sporadically distributed due to the natural resources or habitat. For example, trees in the savanna are produced by birds out digesting its seeds. So the seeds will only grow on places that is suitable for its growth and abundance. The second one is clumping distribution. Clumping distribution means that the organisms in a species are randomly distributed but in packs or a cluster. For example, bulls always roam in packs or in a group to protect themselves from predators by creating a stampede. A bull is not strong enough alone against predators like lions, hyenas, or foxes. That is why they live in clusters to create a stronger and more bonded community. The third one is uniform distribution. This happens when an environment or an area has evenly distributed resources and the animals are reliant or dependent to its resources. For example, meerkats live in a pattern to fit in more with the environment and to get more resources and evenly distribute it to their relatives. This way, they will have more of a better biodiversity. Next is the difference between food chain and food web. The difference between food chain and food web is that food chain is much more simpler and easier to understand than food web because it only contains one pathway of food cycle. There are two types of food chains. The first one is the green food chain, which uses organisms that do photosynthesis as their base. The next one is the brown food chain, which uses the dirt or the decaying remains of other organisms as their base. It is said that food chain is a linear network in a food web, starting from the producers up to the consumers above it. While food web is the interconnecting food chains, that is more complex and more complicated to understand for it has a lot of trophical levels and interconnecting flow of energy in it. Food web is also called consumer resource system. It is also said that it is a graphical representation of what eats what in an ecological community. Lastly, the high and low biodiversity. Biodiversity has high and low biodiversity considered by the number of species in it and the amount of natural resources that that community or environment can produce. Measuring diversity really depends on what way you do it whether species richness or Simpson's Biodiversity Index. Overall, it is said that if a community can produce the right amount of natural resources all year long without lacking any, it means that that community has higher biodiversity and vice versa if considering low biodiversity. We live in this planet and this planet alone. Let us act to the fact that 
This planet is our only hope and our only home to live in. Let us protect biodiversity by reducing human activities to furthermore prolong the life of this nature and the life of this planet. It is still in our power to preserve much of the biodiversity around us and of this planet, which, after all, sustains us in many ways.